First year with Origin, let's get the PR stuff out of the way. We learned a lot, it wasn't all bad. Obviously not the ending we want. Away from it, the next to start was a down. Origin on the cusp of history as they take down the undefeated. Origin will defeat G2. Origin do what no one in the LEC has been able to do so far. I think right now, what Origin's one of their biggest strengths is, is that they're just like a well-oiled machine. Hey, we'll Origin, a tie break. so much to come to death. Look at the moves, look at the players, Vanius. What was that? Man, back, he's out of there. He's gone. G2's hopes of winning this game, Cold goes unstoppable! The LEC semi-finals between Origin and Fnatic! They're gonna try to get a little bit more, but Nuketuk is simply too strong. Patrick not gonna get taken out. Hillisang desperate to get it, but the flash is still there. They were counted out, but here in the Ahoy Arena, OG have cut down Fnatic and will find themselves in a rematch versus G2. They have got themselves another shot at the title. It's the LEC Spring Split Finals between G2 Esports and Origin. If they get fucked, Origin are crumbling to G2. And Europe kneels to its champion. Welcome to Rip Rivals 2019. Duke Duck going into the back line, looking to find that initiation. Mithy goes unstoppable, TSM goes down. Nuke Duck takes him out. Origin keeps the EU win streak alive. Origin fight to save an otherwise catastrophic summer split. And they are finding the Nexus now. Vitality take down Origin in week five. And it's here it. go, SK are defeating Origin all too easily. The decline that they've seen is not what anyone expected. A three game losing streak now for them. They are falling down the st standings, tumbling after being our second place team in spring. Something needs to change for this team if they're gonna rise back up. The first season with Origin was actually a really interesting one. It was kind of roller coaster. First split, we achieved much more than what we expected. We had high hopes because we believed in the in the roster we gathered. The second split was totally different. Most of the year will be kind of overshadowed by the failures of summer, which, funny enough, ended up being the most meaningful split in the entire year because that's where we learned the most, but also the hardest year or how, how to split for all of us. We lost a lot of our games because our own communication broke down. Our own knowledge of how we should play this strategy was incorrect or we couldn't execute it on stage itself. Because I think one of the very cool things about that gauntlet game against Spice was that that could have actually turned the entire season into something possible. Spice, Spice, they're now into the walls, and Zara's the one to be caught out. Counter strike from Alfari gets the double stun. Chachi down into Mininar, and here comes the damage, the charm on the back line. Origin have found their fight. They're just gonna demolish Splice here. There's nothing Splice can do about it at all. Had we beaten Splice, I'm confident we would have beaten Schalke. Then we would have qualified for Worlds, and then everyone would have forgotten the bad regular season. What a success story. Everything would have been great then. But one single best of five, suddenly pushes all the negatives forward and say, ooh, it was a bad regular season, couldn't even beat Spies in a best of five. Origin, go in and go down in a heartbeat. I definitely thought that the last game was going to be ours. After seeing how the whole gauntlet uh, tournament went, we were very sad because uh, we felt like if we won that game, that last game, we could probably win the gauntlet and make it to Worlds. Your desire is not enough to get a victory Friday and another one Saturday. You have to be able to focus on your task in-game. What is actually expected from me from the coach? And I think we lost focus on that part because we were pressured by the results. We needed some victories or more victories than losses. That desire made us forget the performance we had to deliver to get the good results. Everyone put a lot of pressure on themselves. I think the, the players mostly, I could feel that some of them had too much pressure in a way that during Spring Split they were playing for fun and they were playing like, okay, let's do our best and see what we can get. While in summer they were playing with the thought of, in Spring we did really good, why are we not doing as good now? But I am still, to this day, extremely pissed and extremely sad that this team, with how well we started, with the players we had, with the setup we had, that we managed to mess it all up as a group, 
all of us together doing that summer split. And I will never, ever forget how angry and sad at the same time I felt when first we missed playoffs because we played poorly. And when we then in game five versus Spice in the gauntlet, go up 4-0, have two kills on our mid laner. I turn around and I look at my girlfriend and I say, we got it. We're gonna win this game. We have played this in spring a million times. We know exactly what to do now. And then we did nothing. Base. Origin, you gotta defend, you gotta fight, you gotta do something, because right now, Splice are just choking you out of this game. Everything disappeared, everything crumbled, and we lost. And I'd rather lose 3-0 in that game and just be like, well, we just weren't good enough. You know, too many mistakes, too many issues, we couldn't solve. But it actually, I actually felt like we had two weeks where we got much better and we solved a lot of problems. And then we lost in a position we had won in when we were the second best team in Europe three months earlier. And that actually hurt me quite a lot. Uh, and that was a painful moment that I will not forget. 2019 reflection is what we're actually gonna do. I'll put that right here. We had big stage issues, like yes. huge. Like it's it's not normal that most of the things that we were doing in practice, this this karma top ganking top and playing through top like this was happening every time that happened on practice we would address it. But we would still do it. Those dives on top, on week seven, we did the same on week six and we addressed it. Mm -hmm. We literally had like a whole conversation about that pure topic. The transition from training to stage is really important. The difficult part is how do you get your training performances transformed into the game without getting too nervous. And I think eventually everything comes down to structure around the game, structure around uh, the game day, I think it, the process is completely normal. That first, we came out of nothing. We had no roster, we had nothing, we built it. Uh, we start everything when it was difficult at the beginning, but then eventually uh, we gained speed and we were playing really well. Then we became second, that was a surprise. But suddenly, first of all, everybody, they know, okay, they're good. It's not only they could be good, they are actually good. So people are taking you more seriously, that's one, and second, the pressure, suddenly you have something to lose. If you have a team where everybody knows what is expected of me, then the tendency is to get nervous is less. Everybody gets nervous, it's completely normal. This is how I read it. We finished summer, we are on a really high note, and then we basically uh, start to try to, to do this. Not only to try to beat you two, but actually, <clears throat> Actually, in some extent, try to beat you two. Yeah, no, I think the whole thing was I think we did to both. beat them. We were like, no, they no, played no, through three lanes. I don't think beat the them, but beat them. No, I think I think we tried both. And by trying both, m made us go into the different yes. area of the spectrum of who we are. We learned exactly what we need from the different roles on the team. Both outside the game, in terms of people taking a leadership role outside of the game, uh, how we communicate to each other, receiving and giving feedback, and then also in the game, what do we need from the different players in different positions? So in 2020, when we removed all names, our own names, players we don't have, we removed all names. We just said top, jungle, mid, AD carry, support. What do we want from our top laner? What are some key things we need from this person? Same for the jungle, same for mid, same for this, same for that. Quickly realized, okay, the two guys we have in top and mid, they actually fill all these things we want. Maybe there are a few things here and there we can improve on, but no one is perfect. They fill the criteria we're looking for. We started looking at the other roles and we started looking at the market and said, okay, there are actually players who fills this exact thing that we want. My expectations for the next season uh, are actually high, knowing that talk is easy, but building the team day by day is really difficult. With the talented group we created or we signed with the roster we have right now, with the staff, with the strategic change we did in the staff, uh, and with the knowledge we have both in the Astralis group performance model, but also the knowledge we have from the first season, I'm quite optimistic still knowing 
that the hard work is ahead of us. I'm very excited for 2020 about the roster, especially. Like, uh, we managed to get a, a lot of talented people. They are getting a, a good uh, friend vibe, that everyone is having fun, they are doing activities together. They actually laugh when they are playing, and that's really good. And they are all, like, uh, really talented, and that's something that is so in a radiant scream. And that I, especially, I can't wait to see how they perform on the stage. For, for me, it's just very important that they see that they have fun behind the scenes, because normally that shows up in the, in the stage. And I'm pretty sure, by the way, that everything's going right now, that they, they are going to show up. So one of the things that kept me up at night going into 2019, when we reintroduced Origin, was the fan reaction to this brand being back. And the reaction to this whole new lineup, organization, everything around Origin. But the amount of support we instantly got from so many of the old diehard fans and people who just who were just happy to see Origin back, like that was amazing. And it, it, it put like a lot of motivation in us, but it also put the pressure of like, we want to perform because we want to make people happy. We don't want people to be sad that Origin is failing. The amount of interest and engagement around what's going to happen with the roster, what went, what went wrong in 2019, what do you change for 2020? Like, it's amazing to see how many people are actually involved in this. And when this new roster got introduced, the amount of hype around it has been amazing to see. People excited about the roster, the big names, and also seeing people go in not 100% knowing what to expect from everyone, but just excited to see how the team can actually perform. I think now people are hyped and excited about Origin in 2020, and I think we're gonna show to these people that all the hype and all the love, it's well placed, because we're gonna do big things. The performance model we are using in the Stratus Group is a cultural change for almost every player. For some, it might even be a cultural shock. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, my legs were just shaking when I first climbed the, the tree. 